quite uh, tonight, okay? Yes. Where else can we? <laughs> yes, six o'clock. Six o'clock, and it's it's cold now in Toulouse. Yeah, we are. We are. Ah, okay. We online. We are we are online now. Okay. Nice. Then can I start, uh, Tatiana? Yes. Olá pessoal, boa tarde para todos. Muito obrigado por estarem aqui para seguir a palestra da professora Catherine Colan, professora da Universidade de Toulouse e do Instituto de Mecânica de Fluidos, Mecânica de Fluidos de Toulouse. É um grande prazer ter uma it's a nice occasion for us, a an honor for us to have the possibility to, the possibility to follow this keynote of uh, Professor Catherine Collin. Now, I pass the, the words to Tatiana to, to read uh, some, uh, some words about the curriculum vitae of Professor Catherine. Boa tarde, professor. Muito obrigada. É, boa tarde a todos né? e obrigada a todos que estão nos acompanhando para mais uma palestra do ciclo de palestras online do PRH 45 ANP. É, hoje nós temos uma palestrante internacional, a professora Catherine Collin. Então, vou falar um pouquinho em inglês sobre a, a carreira dela. É, thank you very much, professora Catherine. Thank you for your kindness and for taking the time to be here with us today. Our today's lecture is two phase flows for space applications. Now I'm going to talk briefly about Professor Catherine's career. Dr. Catherine Collin is a professor at Institut National Polytechnique, INP, of Toulouse University in France. Her areas of teaching and research include fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, boiling and condensation, turbulence, convection, two-phase flow, multi-phase flow, and microgravity experiments. Since 2002, he has actively participated in research projects and developed collaborations with research teams at national and international levels. To name a few, was vice president of the INP Institute in Toulouse, in 2016 to 2020, uh, was head of the interface group of Institute of Fluid Mechanics in Toulouse University in 2013 to 2017, member of the scientific committee of the French-German program compared in 2005 to 2016. She is an associate editor and editorial member of several scientific journals related to the thermal science and fluid mechanics. Currently, he has more than 1,800 citations of her work in scientific journals. Now, uh, before uh, we start the lecture, I would like to remind you that are following us to ask your questions in the chat that they will be displayed at the end of the presentation. Once again, thank you very much, Professor Catherine. We are happy to hear you. Thank you very much, Tatiana, for your kind introduction. And thank you also, Professor Fassos, for, uh, for the invitation. So I will uh, share my screen. So sorry, uh, everybody, I'm not able to give this uh, lecture in uh, Portuguese, unfortunately. So I will, uh, I will speak uh, in English. So uh, I will present some uh, some uh, of our research on two-phase flow for space applications. So this research has been performed with uh, my colleague, which are assistant professor, Julien Sebio, Sebastian Tanguy, and Anna Federica Urbano. And this work has been performed thanks to uh, two postdocs, Keza Raza, Paul Chorin, and several PhD uh, students. So our research are supported by the French uh, Space Agency, CNES, the European Space Agency, ESA, also the National Science for Research in, uh, in France, 
and industrial partner because you will see that we have a lot of uh, uh, application industrial application for uh, for two phase flow in, in microgravity especially uh, snegma motor which is a builder of uh, engine for launcher air liquid which builds the tank of the launcher and Thales and airbus for satellites so concerning the uh, application for uh, for two phase flow up oh, sorry excuse me concerning the application for uh, for two phase flow you can see what happened or not it's fine i think uh, i'm not on uh, i i share the screen uh, already or i i i see your first uh first slide okay yeah. so okay. this not work to uh, pass Right. Okay, uh, let me come back. Ah, ah yes, it's a uh, uh, sorry for the technical problem. Okay, let me try. And we start again. You can see the second slide or not? Not the just the first first slide yet. I can see the second slide here, so I don't know. Maybe I have to uh, to let this one. Here you can. Yes, see. the second. Yes. I, I will stay like that. Okay, <laughs> because uh, I cannot. Uh, okay, is it fine? Okay. So uh, concerning uh, uh, the presence of two-phase flow in uh, application, uh, especially in France, there is a lot of research around uh, nuclear power uh, plant. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, in the power uh, in the pressurized power reactor. We are not supposed to be in boiling because we have uh, we are at high pressure, high temperature. But uh, heat is exchanging with a secondary circuit, uh, which is in a secondary circuit which is uh, at a lower uh, lower pressure and uh, lower temperature where we have a creation of vapor vapor which will entrain the turbine to produce electricity and after we have the uh, condensation of the system and uh, nevertheless uh, in the case of accident we may have some uh, uh, some uh, boiling in the pressurized water reactor especially we, we when we have a local accident loss of coolant accident when we have a breakup of a, of a line we may have some depressurization in the core of the pressurized water reactor and we may have intense boiling in this situation so in that case uh, the main problem is to predict the boiling crisis, which can uh, uh, lead to the melt of the core of the pressurized water reactor, which is uh, uh, an accident uh, in, uh, in the nuclear power plant. Another uh, application uh, concerns also a solar uh, energy farm. When you concentrate the uh, radiation of, uh, of, the, of the sun in order to, to have a heat up of a, of a long tube, and in this tube you may have some, uh, some water which will be vapor, vaporized, and you have the liquid, you have the water which is vaporized, and then it can entrain a turbine to produce electricity. So this kind of solar farm uh, are developed especially uh, in Israel and we have some of these solar farms in the south of, uh, of France also. Another application that you probably know is the uh, oil extraction and transportation of uh, hydrocarbon. So when you have a uh, uh, well, uh, oil well uh, uh, in the sea at a uh, high half, you will have a strong depressurization between uh, the uh, uh, between the, the well and uh, and the and the water uh, and the, the top of uh, of the water, and then you may have vaporization of the light hydrocarbon. So first met, uh, ethane, methane, ethane, and so on. Then you will have a two-phase flow in this uh, long line. Then the uh, the problematic is the prediction of pressure drop along the pipe and also the prediction of instability which can occur when you have especially slug flow so we will see what is slug flow we may have a, 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 a problematic which is linked to severe slugging 
So let's come back to uh, space industry. Then you have uh, boiling uh, also in uh, in space industry. So sometimes you are looking for boiling, and sometimes you would like to avoid boiling in this uh, in this uh, situation. So especially in the case of uh, the launcher. So uh, here I'm just talking about the uh, first stage uh, of uh, Ariane 5 uh, launcher, which is. Uh, cryogenic reservoir where you have liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen and due to uh, solar radiation you may have a boiling inside the tank and if you have boiling the tank the pressure will increase inside the tank and if the pressure increase you need to release some propellant and if you release too much propellant you don't have enough propellant to uh, continue the mission so you have to reduce the time of the mission so this is uh, uh, problematic Another important problematic is the uh, uh, cooling of electronic device in uh, in satellite, for example. Then you have evaporator, and you when you have electronic device, they will dissipate some energy which can be removed by evaporating a refrigerant, for example, or another fluid. It can be methanol, it can be ammonium, and uh, also from this evaporator, you will uh, the fluid will circulate. You have uh, adiabatic vapor flow and through the condenser you will return to the liquid state and come back to a single phase flow with a pump so this kind of device can be used on satellites where you have a hot source which is linked to electronic devices in the, inside the satellite and the cold source is uh, will be uh, uh, on the top and on uh, on the different top and bottom of the satellites and we have radiation to the dark, uh, to the sky, to the dark skies with very low temperatures, and you can condensate the liquid in this cell. So this uh, this kind of uh, of, uh, of device uh, requires a whale knowledge on the two-phase flow in a microgravity condition. So uh, let's come back to uh, to the boiling phenomenon. So uh, the first uh, experiment, uh, so you have other experiments, but the well-known experiments reported in the literature on, uh, on boiling is the experiments of uh, Nukiyama in uh, 1932, where he performed an experiment by eating by effet joule a wire, which is uh, uh, in, a, in a bath, uh, in, a, in a water bath at saturation temperature. In heat up the, the wire by applying, by Joule effect, by applying a voltage U. And he can uh, measure the current crossing the wire. And if you uh, divide the power applied to the wire UE divided by the surface of the wire, you will have the heat flux, which will be transmitted to the, to the fluid. And if you measure uh, the voltage and the current, you can have a direct measurement of the resistance of the wire. And the resistance of the wire is function of the temperature of the wire. Then he was able to plot a curve where you have the heat flux in function of the temperature of the wire. And most precisely on the uh, overheat temperature, that is the difference of temperature between the wire and the saturation temperature. And he plotted this kind of curve where you have an increase of the, uh, when you apply uh, an increasing heat flux, you have an increase of the temperature until a given value where you have a maximum of the heat flux. And at this heat flux, you will have a very sharp increase of the temperature. And you can after increase. And when you decrease the power, then you have an hysteresis phenomena. So let's see what, uh, what happened in this configuration. Then uh, Drew and Muller uh, perform experiments uh, two years uh, after just to visualize what happened. And in this uh, experiment, they don't apply the heat flux, they apply a constant temperature at the wall and they measure the heat flux. So in this situation, they observe, uh, very, uh, they observe thermal convection. Uh, at a low heat flux and low wall temperature. And after a given temperature, they have some boiling incipients. And you can see that the slope of the curve increases much more in this uh, situation. It means that the heat transfer coefficient increases in boiling. 
but the heat flux reaches a maximum value, and this maximum value is reached when a significant part of the uh, surface is covered by vapor, and this vapor insulates uh, the heated surface from the liquid, and the heat flux is limited. So if you apply a constant temperature, then the heat flux will decrease, and if you apply a constant heat flux, the temperature of the surface will sharply increase and you will reach uh, what we call the dry out of the surface. And after you have at this temperature, you have a film boiling, so this is a stable film in contact with the liquid. So let's see, I don't know if the video will, uh, will be operating. I just wanted, I don't know if I can share my screen again or not, just to test. Can you see the, uh, the video or not? Not, Professor. The video oh. was not, not work, working. So let's continue uh, this one. It's not, uh, not very convenient because... Uh, so, so here, uh, the, at, uh, at low heat flux, here this is an experiment we perform in the lab by heating a, a wire. And you can see that we have some, uh, some video uh, we have some uh, some boiling here. Uh, okay, so let's see. Yes, we have uh, we have boiling uh, here, and you can see that here the liquid is subcool. That bubble are created on the wire, but they are uh, after uh, condensating in the in the liquid flow. And if you increase uh, uh, the power or the wire temperature, you will see that you have more and more bubble on the on the wire. And one significant part of the wire is covered by, by the bubble. So we are close to reach the maximum uh, heat flux. And if we go at much higher temperature here, you can see that you have no contact between the, uh, the wire and the liquid. It's always covered by, by vapors. And you can see the bubbles which detach, but they are immediately the, the wire is immediately covered by vapor. And you can see that you have a, a very white part of the wire. So it's a black and white camera, but in reality, it's a red part of the wire and it's a close to, uh, to burn. And so this is, a, it will be destroyed. So let's see now what happened in, uh, so generally boiling happen, can happen on wire on surface, but in most of the application, Boiling uh, occurs inside a tube. So this is the case, for example, when, when we want uh, cool uh, electronic devices and we have a tube. And then you can see that in the tube, we can have different flow patterns. So this is, for example, what we call bubbly flow, where you can see here, you can see bubble nucleated at the wall. And this is in, uh, in microgravity condition. Huh? I will come back later on that. So uh, you can see different bubbles. And you can see, so if you if you uh, increase the amount of vapor, you will have different uh, uh, flow condition. And you can see here, you have a long bubble. So this is a slug flow, so where you have a long vapor bubbles, which are followed with a, with a small liquid slug in which you have some bubbles. And you, when you increase more uh, the uh, the, the quality or the quantity of vapor, you have what is called an annular flow. So you have liquid flowing at the wall and all the core of the flow is made of vapor. And you can see that you have some uh, interface disturbing uh, in, in the center. So what we, um, what we uh, can uh, see in, in boiling, what is important, is to characterize the flow pattern. Then the flow pattern, uh, which are uh, the mass flux, uh, you, you have uh, one different parameters and the, the uh, mass flow rate m dot, and you can define the mass flux g. This is the mass flow rate divided by the cross section. And another important parameter is the, the quality, and the quality is the mass flow rate of the vapor divided by the total mass flow rate. From these two parts, you can calculate. GL, which is the superficial liquid velocity, GV, which is the superficial vapor velocity, and you can plot a flow pattern map. So this is classical for two-phase flow. 
then you can plot the liquid superficial velocity versus the vapor superficial velocity, and you can plot the different flow patterns. So here, for example, we have bubbly flow. So bubbly flow will be in this region, so in the region where the quality is small, so x is small, m dot v divided by m dot is small, and also gv is small. If you increase the quality, for example, you will see that you have an intermediate flow pattern. So this is uh, uh, the slug flow here. This is this flow pattern in the middle. So here it's in, the, in this domain. And if you increase much more the quality, then you have annular flow, which uh, this, uh, this last pattern on the right. So why we are interested in flow pattern and flow boiling? It's because pressure drop and heat transfer will be function of the flow pattern. So what is important is uh, boiling is a complex phenomenon. Uh, you can have a different uh, boiling regime. You can be in subcool boiling when the liquid is uh, below the saturation temperature, but it's uh, higher at higher temperature at the wall. You have nucleation at the wall. So this is a subcool boiling. You may have nucleate boiling regime where you have formation of bubble at the wall. So it can occur in bubbly flow and also in slug flow. And you have also convective boiling regimes. And convective boiling regimes uh, are mainly uh, uh, annular flow regime where you have a strong heat transfer through the liquid film at the wall. So in, uh, in boiling, uh, typically, you have a 16 independent parameters. So you have the control parameter, which are uh, the flow rates, the diameter of the tube, the heat flux applied to the wall or the wall temperature, the quality of the liquid temperature, gravity, and the pressure or the saturation temperature. So these are the operating conditions. You also have the fluid properties. So if you work with water or with refrigerant, it's not the same story. So uh, with the fluid properties, and you have uh, for liquid and vapor, the density, heat capacitance, uh, thermal conductivity, viscosity, surface tension, and latent heat of vaporization. So if you apply the P theorem or the bashi wickingham theorem, it means that you will have 16 independent dimensionless numbers that can be built to uh, provide some modeling of uh, boiling. So this is quite complicated. You have a lot of dimensionless number. Then you have a Reynolds number, which characterizes the flow inertia divided by viscosity. You have a full number uh, integrating the effect of gravity, the Weber number with the effect of surface tension, prof prompt number for uh, heat transfer. You have a Jacob number characterizing the subcooling of the liquid. A cat number with thermal energy. The ratio of the fluid property, you have a Martinelli parameter, which is often used for the prediction of pressure drop. And you can express the Jacob number, which gives you the uh, wall temperature or the boiling number, which gives you the heat flux at the wall in function of the over dimensionless number. So you can imagine that it's uh, very complicated to uh, predict uh, heat transfer, pressure drop in boiling because you have so many parameters. And especially if you want to work in microgravity, you cannot use classical correlation and try to write G equal to zero in microgravity. You will see that the full number will diverge and go to infinity in that case. So this is the reason why uh, it is important to perform experiments in conditions which are close to, uh, to uh, the environment space. And most of our experiments uh, are performed, especially the experiments in tube. And you can see here just the difference between uh, the two-phase flow in, uh, in normal condition and in microgravity condition. And to achieve a condition which are close to uh, the space condition, we are performing experiments in uh, parabolic flight. So parabolic flight is an aircraft. So here you can see the experiments with the PhD students in the aircraft. And uh, you can put your device inside an aircraft. And this aircraft is doing some parabolic trajectory. So it means that you have uh, a st steady flight. 
you have an increase of um, of uh, acceleration due to uh, to the entrance in one parabola and you have one parabola on 20 seconds during which you uh, you you are uh, uh, very close to microgravity condition so you have gravity level close to 10 to the minus 2 times the terrestrial gravity so this is interesting to perform experiments in in weightlessness so you can see here from these two uh, two videos that you have a very strong difference in the behavior of two-phase flow in normal gravity and in microgravity condition. And you can see the consequence, for example, on the heat transfer coefficient. So in this graph, we plot the heat transfer coefficient versus the vapor quality. That means the mass flow rate of vapor divided by the total mass flow rate. And you can see the difference between microgravity condition and one G gravity condition, we have a very high difference in the heat transfer coefficient. So it's a, it's difficult to anticipate such a difference in heat transfer coefficient when you want to design some uh, two-phase flow system for space application. So what we did, we built an experimental setup. So this is the setup in the aircraft. So this is the two-phase flow loop and this is the acquisition and measurement uh, rack for uh, uh, which is linked to, to this loop. So in this loop, we have uh, we use a refrigerant, which is uh, HFE uh, 7000. So we, it's a refrigerant which boils at low temperature, 33 degrees at atmospheric pressure. So it's convenient to use. So we have a displacement pump, we have a Coriolis flow meter, and we have a first preator where we can heat up the liquid, a second preator when we can boil the liquid. We have the test section here, visualization, box also and we have the condensation system with Peltier effect so here we are what happened in the test section we have a sapphire tube which is transparent and this sapphire tube is coated by a very thin uh, uh, metallic deposit and this uh, metallic deposit is heated by joule effect so we can boil in this section and since the deposit is very thin it's transparent and we can have a, a visualization of, uh, of the flow pattern. We have pressure measurement, we have temperature measurement, when we can know what are the thermodynamic uh, uh, state of the fluid and the mixture in, in this test section. So here, for example, we can see, well, so we perform experiments, I forget to see, to, to, to tell, we perform experiments in upward flow. So the flow is coming from below to the top. We perform experiments in microgravity conditions. So in microgravity, it doesn't matter, but the flow is also coming from below. And we perform experiments in the lab where the flow is going from the top to the bottom. So if we look to what happened here, so we saw already what happened in, a, in, a, in normal gravity upward flow, in microgravity. And now let's see what happened in downward flow. So in downward flow, you can see liquid and vapor are coming from below, but at low flow rate, you can see that uh, the uh, bubbles try to come up to the effect of gravity and they are pushed down by the fluid. And in some cases, there is some equilibrium. So if you increase the velocity of the fluid, in that case, uh, all the bubbles are going down and the bubble size is uh, much smaller. So if we look at what happened in, uh, in the slug flow regime, so in slug flow regime, so this is what happened in upward flow. Sorry for the video because uh, normally the it was supposed to work together, but it was not working. And here you have what happened in downward flow. So in downward flow, you can see that uh, uh, the, you have a, what is called the falling film regime, where uh, the large bubble is standing, and you have a liquid flowing from uh, apart from, uh, from this large bubble. And this is the annular flow regime. So here, okay, so here, it's, uh, you will not see exactly what happened because normally it's supposed to work as a free at the same, uh, at the same time. So if we uh, compare the velocity of, uh, and the frequency of the roll waves, uh, the frequency of the roll waves, so you can see the roll waves is a passage of these, uh, of these, uh, waves, uh, 
the frequency is much larger in uh, upward flow than in uh, down than in uh, microgravity and in downward flow. So you can see here the mean wave frequency is highest here in upward flow and lowest here, and also the mean the wave velocity is also higher here and lower here. So it means that uh, the uh, characteristic of, uh, of the annular flow is very sensitive to gravity, and especially the perturbation of the interface is also very sensitive to gravity. So it means that it will have an influence of the pressure drop and also on the heat transfer. So gravity will have a strong influence on that. So let's see what happens. So I'm sorry because everything is uh, super superimposed, so maybe it's not so uh, easy to see. So concerning heat transfer coefficient, you have a different mode of uh, heat transfer coefficient if boiling. You have heat transfer which is controlled by nucleate boiling. So nucleate boiling is the formation of vapor of bubble at the wall. So this is what you can see here and what you can see also in this part. So in that case, uh, when uh, heat transfer is controlled by bubble nucleation, if you increase the heat flux at the wall, you will increase the number of bubbles that you will create at the wall. So here you can see the difference on uh, what happened for a heat flux of uh, one, uh, one watt per square centimeter and with two watts per square centimeter. So in this regime, what you can see is that if you increase the heat flux, you will increase the heat transfer coefficient. So this is the heat transfer coefficient versus the quality. So here you are in a regime which is dominated by the nucleate boiling regime. So it is occur at low quality and it's occur also uh, at all the quality, but where you are at low mass flux. In contrary, if you have a very strong convection, so if you are, for example, a high mass flux, you are dominated by the convection. So this is this kind of regime you can see in the top and, in, and below. And is this kind of regime, which occur here, a convective boiling regime, you can see that the effect of the heat flux, open and closed symbol are uh, superposed, the effect of the heat flux is not significant. So it means that this is mostly the convection which will remove the heat from the wall and not the nucleation due to the formation of the bubble. So we can identify this different uh, mode of uh, heat transfer. So if, um, if we want to model a heat transfer coefficient, so there is an interesting work by uh, Kim and Mudawar in, uh, in uh, 2013, which based the heat transfer in two-phase flow in function of the contribution due to nucleate boiling and the contribution due to convective boiling. So you can see here, so I will not enter into the detail of this, uh, of this nucleation, but just look at the dimensionless numbers that are used uh, to predict this uh, heat transfer coefficient. This is the dimensionless numbers that we identify previously when we uh, uh, check the 12 dimensionless number to uh, involve in boiling. So you have the boiling number here. You have the ratio of pressure with the critical, uh, the critical pressure, the quality. And you find it's also a Weber number here and the Martinelli parameter and the ratio of density. So if we apply uh, the um, correlation of Kim and Mudawa as it is with all the value of this coefficient in this line, you can see that here the predictions are not very good. And they are not very good because they are, uh, this prediction, all these coefficients have been fitted on a, several experimental setup, but with metallic tube. So with metallic tube, you have a lot of nucleation of the bubble at the wall and a lot of nucleation. So in this region, you have a high heat flux, which is not the case in our experiments because we are using a sapphire tube, which is a very, very smooth surface with very few nucleation sites. Then we have to diminish the effect of the nucleation at the wall and B. And we have to increase at high heat flux the effect of the convection at, at mass flux. So if we change a little bit the coefficient, you can see in red and in purple, we are able to fit all, the, all our data on the heat transfer coefficient uh, in upward flow. And now if we want to apply to what happened in downward flow 
and also in microgravity. So this is for microgravity and this is for downward flow. So we have to change a little bit the coefficient, but not so much to be able to predict what happened in the different flow configuration. So if we want to look at the effect of gravity, so sorry, it's a little bit uh, messy, but uh, let's see. So here there is a comparison between a, a heat transfer coefficient versus quality. In a microgravity, this is the open symbol you can see on the different curve. And in, norm, in normal gravity condition, it upward flow. And you can see that for uh, low uh, quality and for low mass flux, we have uh, an important effect of uh, of the of the gravity. So here you can see large difference between one uh, g and zero g. So between normal gravity and microgravity, then it corresponds to the boiling number, which are smaller than uh, two to the minus three. Here you have a generally higher heat transfer coefficient in normal gravity relative to microgravity. If you increase uh, uh, the, uh, uh, if you increase the heat flux, for example, you will see that by increasing the heat flux, you don't have so much difference between heat transfer coefficient in normal and in microgravity condition. So it means that for higher boiling number, so higher heat flux divided by G and the latent heat of vaporization, higher uh, boiling numbers at two to the minus three, the heat transfer coefficient is about the same in normal and microgravity conditions. So there is some region where you have no uh, influence of gravity on heat transfer coefficient, and it's very important to know uh, what happened. So this is what we can do at the pipe uh, scale. So you, uh, you can understand that it's difficult to have uh, uh, very detailed information. So we have visualization at the pipe scale. We have a, we have a pressure uh, measurement. We have temperature measurement. Then we can obtain some data at the scale of the pipe for one-dimensional modeling, for uh, for a sizing of a engineering loop for cooling electronic device, for example. So if we want to enter a little bit more in the details and in the understanding of the physical mechanism, for example, in nucleate boiling regime, so nucleate boiling is the formation of bubble at the wall. If you look at what happened at the wall, you can see that on the wall, a bubble will be created. Heat transfer will be exchanged by vaporization of the bubble at the wall. When the bubble is large enough, it will detach from the wall and it will be replaced by the cooler liquid close to the wall. And heat transfer will occur by a conduction, by unsteady conduction at the wall. And in between the nucleation site, you will have convection uh, in the nucleation site. So this is a kind of a, of a schematic uh, uh, of the phenomena of what happened. But now, thanks to numerical simulation and thanks to advanced diagnostic, we are able to measure this different contribution. So this is, for example, uh, what happened in, the, in, in, this, uh, in this picture. You can see uh, temperature field and heat flux uh, field uh, obtained by uh, a team of, uh, of the MIT uh, in Boston. So they perform temperature measurement of the lower part of the surface. And you can see that you have a region where you have very high temperature, low temperature. And from this uh, measurement, you can calculate the heat flux by, uh, by making a pixel by pixel heat uh, it, it balance. And you can clearly see some round here. You have the round which is a maximum heat flux, and it corresponds to the presence of the bubble on the surface. Then you are able to calculate the heat which will be removed by evaporation. The heat, so this is, for example, in this surface, you have the heat flux partitioning, that means the contribution, these three different contribution, depending on the average heat flux. Then you can see the contribution of the evaporation. You can also see when the bubble departs from the wall, what happened by the light, uh, by the unsteady condition. So this is the light blue contribution here. And you can see what happened 
In between the nucleation sites, that mean here, here, where you have no bubbles at the wall, you have only convection, so it can be free convection or it can be forced convection if we are in forced boiling. And you can see this is this contribution. So this is very interesting. This kind of modeling is very interesting because you can, from this data, obtain what is shared, what will be used to create vapor and what will be transferred to eat up the temperature of the liquid. So this is a contribution which go to the liquid. This is a contribution which go to the vapor. So this kind of approach uh, completely justify to study what happened at the bubble scales. So what happened from the numerical simulation, we can also perform numerical simulation at the bubble scale. So this is what was performed by different teams and also by our laboratory. And there are also some uh, uh, numerical simulation which are performed with several bubbles. So this is what was performed by ETH Zurich and the team of uh, USATO. And you can see that you have several bubbles and you are able to plot a boiling curve, which is a heat transfer coefficient versus the wall superheat. But this kind of simulation is very expensive and you cannot do that for uh, industrial uh, situation. So now I will talk about another experiment we have, which is a uh, boiling, uh, which is a Ruby uh, experiment. So this is Musty scale boiling experiment. It's um, uh, an experiment which was performed by the European Space Agency with the collaboration of several European team and also in collaboration with Japanese and American team. So the objective of this experiment was to study uh, the boiling on an isolated nucleation site, so one single bubble in microgravity condition. So this is a small scale experiment and you can see that the height of the channel here is five millimeters, so it gives you an idea of what happened. Uh, so here you can not see unfortunately the animation, but what you uh, we have a, a, a surface which is uh, heated we have a laser to uh, activate one nucleation site on the surface. We have a high-speed camera to measure the uh, uh, lateral uh, uh, the, uh, growth of the bubble uh, on, the, on the lateral part of the surface. And we have an infrared camera to measure the temperature field below uh, the surface. So we can, uh, this, uh, this device uh, was uh, packed into a small box, so it's uh, like a shoe box, and you can see the installation of, uh, this, uh, of this box in the Fluid Science Laboratory of the International Space Station. So this, uh, our experiment was uh, launched uh, on July uh, 2019, and it was operated until uh, January 2021. So here, uh, we, uh, I talk about uh, space application, but we are also interested by fundamental research. So if you look at what happened uh, on ground experiments, so this is experiments that you can see in the, on ground, that you can see that you create very, very small bubbles and uh, with a very high frequency. So it's very difficult to investigate what happened at the bubble scales and especially what is the heat transfer between the bubble and the wall. If you work at microgravity condition, bubble will not detach uh, due to the effect of buoyancy. Then you can create a large bubble which will grow slowly and you can clearly investigate what happened at the bubble foot. Then you have time to do that and also you have the space resolution and you have a, a bubble which is large enough. So if you uh, look at this video, you can see, so this is what happened in a shear flow because we can have also electric field or shear flow to detach the bubble. And you can see on the top, the black and white images and on the bottom, the infrared camera images. And then you can see the blue cycle, which are the temperature at the bubble foot, which is colder than on the other face of, uh, of the surface. It means that you have a strong evaporation at the bubble foot. So we can study heat transfer thanks to this uh, infrared uh, camera. So it's also interesting to have a, a benchmark for a numerical uh, simulation in this configuration. So we perform a lot of experiments. We perform uh, more than uh, 3,000 experiments. So we have a lot of data now to process to analyze uh, the results. 
So I just wanted to show you uh, this video where you have uh, four different configurations. You have pool bowling on the top left. You have pool bowling with an electric field on the top right. You have a shear flow on the bottom left and you have shear flow plus electric field on the bottom right. So what you can see is if, if you are in pool bowling, you have a spherical bubble growing at the wall and nothing happens because the bubble will not detach, nothing will happen. If you have an electric field, you have the electric stresses applied on the surface of the bubble and you have a deformation of the bubbles and in some times the bubble can be detached vertically due to the electric, uh, electric stresses. If you have a flow boiling, if you have a, a flow, the bubble will be detached under the effect of the drag exerted by the flow on the bubble. So you can see the bubble will detach and sometimes they coalesce and will lift off from the wall. And if you have a, a shear flow and an electric field, then here in this configuration, you can see that the bubble will slide along the wall. I don't know if I can, no, I just do not want to, uh, to come back too, too far. But the bubble will slide along the wall and also the bubble will be elongated. Here you can see they are not spherical as in a shear flow, but they are elongated and they slide along the wall. So there are different teams we, who are working on the pool bowling on electric field. So the team of PISA is especially working, University of PISA is working on electric field. We are working on the shear flow experiments and uh, other teams are working on, uh, on, all, the, on all, all this configuration. So what we can see in a shear flow, for example, we have different shear flow, uh, different flow rates. So from 100 milliliter per minute to 700 milliliter per minute. And here we plotted the evolution of the bubble diameter versus time. So if you are in pool bowling, you have a very large bubble. But if you increase the, the flow rate, you will have a smaller and smaller bubbles that you can see here. You have smaller bubble which will detach and slide along the wall. What is interesting is also the we test several pressures, several heat flux, subcooling, uh, shear rate, electric field, and so on. So we have several parameters. It's explained why we have uh, finally uh, 3,000 experiments. So if you uh, if you look at the effect of the subcooling. So here uh, you can see with the liquid is at five degrees below the saturation temperature. We create some bubbles, which we slide because we have a shear flow. And you, have, you can see the bubble size. And if you increase the subcooling, it means that the liquid is uh, colder. You can see in this configuration that we will have smaller bubbles than in the previous case, because the bubble size will be controlled by um, a balance between evaporation, which is due to uh, to the heating of the walls, and you have a, a liquid layer which is superheated, then you have evaporation of the bubble, and you have a balance with the condensation at the bubble top because the liquid is below the saturation temperature. So this is this balance between evaporation and condensation which will control the bubble size. And here we found that the bubble size evolved as a root mean square of time, and we have a constant K, and this constant will depend on the subcooling. So if the subcooling is higher, this constant is lower, it means that the, the rate, growth rate of the bubble will be smaller. So now we have to, uh, to study at the same time heat transfer and dynamics of, uh, of the bubble. So finally, we can use, we can also use this kind of, uh, of uh, experiment. To, uh, to validate uh, our simulation. So in the laboratory, we are developing some uh, uh, direct numerical uh, simulation of uh, incompressible uh, two-phase flow with phase change. So we have several different numerical methods. And what is important is that in this, uh, in this configuration, what happened close to the contact line is very important. Then we have and the growth rate of the bubble is controlled to what's up is uh, is controlled to what's happened at very small scales, so very close to the contact line. And at this line, this is at the nanometric scales. We cannot uh, reach this scale with the numerical simulation because you can see the bubble will be maybe few millimeter diameter, and you cannot use a mesh to simulate 
what happened at a, at a millimetric scale and what happened at the same time as a nanometric scale. That means that we need to develop theoretical model to implement in our code a macro scale model, which will be as a boundary condition and to reproduce what uh, the interaction, thermal interaction with the wall. So this is what we, we did here. I don't know if it works. Ah. Okay, then you can see the bubble growing. So it's a qualitative uh, comparison, but you have interaction with, uh, with uh, the wall. So this is a wall and this is the boiling bubbles and you can see the thermal field, which change. And you can see the cooling of the wall very close to the contact line. So, uh, I think, uh, ah, try to continue with the slide. This not seems to work. Okay. So just in conclusion, uh, we study uh, two phase flow. Uh, the study of two phase flow in microgravity is unavoidable for developing technical solutions for space application because all the model we develop on the on ground cannot be directly applicable to microgravity condition. And uh, microgravity uh, also allows to study the effect of capillary force, viscous force, which are generally hidden by gravity on the wall. And in the case of the uh, multiscale boiling experiments, microgravity condition allows to observe phenomena with a better space and time resolution. So it's a great help to, uh, to the fundamental understanding of boiling and especially uh, the heat transfer uh, with the wall. So thank you for your attention and uh, sorry for not being able to, to share uh, very well my presentation because uh, I was not in more presenter so it was not so easy with uh, the video. Very nice. Very Thank nice you. and yeah. interesting presentation, Catherine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice Thank uh, you. visualization. Do you have uh, questions? Tatiana? Uh, no, in the chat, uh, we, we don't have uh, any questions yet. But uh, thank you, Professor Katanin, for the excellent presentation. And I have, I have uh, one question. Maybe it's not a, a good question, but... <laughs> Uh, when, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when researchers uh, on two phase flows in microgravity are carried out, the system seems to be simplified for a better in understanding of the physical phenomenon. Uh, but when, for example, uh, multi phase flows are studied in the oil and gas industry, where the heterogeneity is and and isotropy uh, of the medium are of paramount importance. Uh, it, is it possible to bring the same numerical approximation uh, to this other reality? Uh, you mean, uh, for, uh, you, uh, your question is about the uh, uh, representation of numerical simulation or? Uh... Yes, in experimental in, in microgravity, um, if uh, they can be um, uh, brought to the to the oil and gas industry. Okay. So what we learn from microgravity condition to uh, which could be applied to oil industry? This is your question. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, from. Um, what what we de we develop uh, there are different uh, level of the, of the question uh, all the one dimensional modeling uh, on which we we rely on the dimensionless number clearly 
we are not in the same range of dimensionless number uh, as the oil industry. Because uh, you have a large tube, you have much uh, higher uh, Reynolds number, you have uh, uh, different viscosity, and uh, it's, uh, it's quite different. You have much more complex phenomena. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult. But the development of, uh, of, uh, of modeling uh, could be interesting, nevertheless. So for example, uh, in, um, in uh, annular flow, I didn't show that, but uh, in, um, in annular flow here, uh, you have some, uh, some rollways, and this kind of flow can be, uh, can be also uh, on contrary in the uh, oil industry. And here, uh, the study of the, of the roll wave and the entrainment of droplet and so on uh, uh, can also be, uh, uh, what we learn here can also be uh, used, maybe uh, the modeling can be used. But especially, we can be, it's not just plug and play because uh, it's not uh, in the same condition. But what we learn about uh, the interaction of, uh, of the roll waves, the entrainment of droplet, and the impact of the interfacial shear stress, for example, this is useful also for uh, other type of problem. But this is not completely related to microgravity. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Catherine, I was impressed by, by the quality of the, the images, especially for this one with a single bubble. Then we have a single site, a special site, and uh, uh, a surface uh, very smooth, very okay. Yes, we have one one surface, and we have a, a L shape in the surface uh, to create one bubble and not to deactivate uh, the site of nucleation because you saw that in uh, in flow boiling we have several bubbles which are nucleated, and uh, since we have a very smooth surface, uh, we need to have a, a nucleation site. To, uh, to create one bubbles and also with the help of the laser to have a small overheat of, uh, of the nucleation site. Otherwise, we will have parasitic boiling everywhere yeah. on the surface. So this is a problem. Yeah, so the... that and we will uh, limit it to, uh, to heat flux of uh, 1.5 watt per square centimeter because if we increase the heat flux, uh, we have a parasitic boiling. Okay. Nice. And uh, just uh, for this experiment, uh, I think it was in Cosmo. Uh, then you you put in your slide that the heat flux is 0 0.6 watt per square centimeters. Wait. Plus mine 0.1. Could you explain why the, the uncertainty uh, too high for this uh, heat flux? Uh, where is it? I don't. Uh... Is the I I don't uh, is is the you put uh, uh, I I think it was a uh, when you explain the experiment in Cosmo. Cosmos, uh, yes, it is. Ah, it is uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yes, I think, uh, yes. This, this graph? Yes, I think it's this one, yes. With the difference in 1G and 0G? Yeah. Wait. No, this is okay. But the heat flux, because you, you had a heat flux equal to 0.6, and the plus minus 0 0.1, okay? I was uh, just, uh, 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 it was just a curiosity, and why? Uh, you mean, uh, when, when we compare the, the, when we compare the heat flux? Yes. Okay, no, it doesn't mean that we have an uncertainty of 0.1 on the heat flux. It means that the heat flux was not exactly the same in the free condition. 
Okay. Because we compare, uh, we compare, we would like to uh, to compare the effect of gravity, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, we did not perform experiments exactly at the same heat flux. So we apply the same power, but we don't have the same heat losses. So okay. it, uh, it leads to different uh, heat flux value finally, because the heat flux it's a real heat flux. So this is the power, and we uh, retried the heat losses. Yes, uh, you you could have a very very interesting and very clear uh, visualization. Did you improve uh, a lot uh, this uh, technique of visualization, even in microgravity? Yes, it was uh, the, the sapphire tube is interesting for that because we are able to uh, to visualize. Uh, and also to measure uh, heat transfer, but we, we have only measurement of heat transfer at several uh, points because we use uh, we use PT100 probes, and we are not able to use in that case infrared thermography to measure heat transfer. Okay, nice. Uh, professor, we have we have a question. I will put in the in the screen. Ah, okay. No, we don't study uh, point crosses the same as in pool boiling. Okay, so um, we don't study boiling crisis, so sometimes we reach boiling crisis, but uh, we didn't want to destroy the, our tube because um, we have a sapphire tube and we have a coating outside this tube. And uh, if we reach a temperature more than 120 degrees, uh, we will degrade uh, the, the deposit, the metallic deposit. So we try to avoid uh, the, the, the boiling crisis. And uh, in pool boiling, uh, in flow boiling, you have two types of uh, boiling crisis. You may have a boiling crisis, which is due to uh, overheated of the wall, and you have uh, what is called a departure from nucleate boiling. So we are boiling, and after, if you have a concentration of bubble at the wall, you will have a vapor film form at the wall. So this is what we call the departure from nucleate boiling. This is what happens when you have a high heat flux. And there are another uh, boiling crisis, which is uh, which can occur if you are in annular flow. In annular flows, uh, if you continue to heat up, what happens? The liquid film will become thinner and thinner, and then it will completely evaporate. Then you will have only vapor, a vapor core with a droplet, because here you have droplet entrainment in the core, so you will have vapor core. So this is a boiling crisis, which is, which is linked to a dry out of the liquid film. And this is specific to a, a flow boiling by comparison to pool boiling. OK, nice. I don't know if I understand if I answer your question. Or... Tatiana? He, no, we have uh, we don't have more questions in the chat. We have uh, many uh, congratulations for your presentation, Professor. But but the questions are. <laughs> the only in the, in the chat is the only question. Okay, I hope it was not difficult, too difficult to follow because I don't know exactly the background of the uh, of the audience. So, uh, yes, uh, some of them uh, could uh, have uh, uh, followed the the boiling cars. Okay, we have uh, in our graduate. Uh, graduate program i continue to to offer this uh, this uh, class this discipline this course in 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 two phase flow and we have also uh, professor emilio with uh, a, a interesting two phase flow also okay then we arrive to the end of our our seminar of today in time okay okay so thank you very much thank, thank you very, you very much. much Caterine it was a pleasure to have yes. you 
your presentation in our uh, cycle of uh, seminars, Ciclo de Palestras. Okay, thank you very much for uh, for your invitation. And Come see on. you up next time. Next time, it's next night. Time. It's the night in, in France now. Okay, okay. bye bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye, Professor. Thank bye. you very much. That's bye. enough for everything. Thank you, Julio. Ciao. Bye.